And let's be honest, it doesn't matter where you go. It is incredibly hard to escape the heat. Most of the state now under a heat advisory and facing excessive heat warnings. And emergency response teams are on the standby across the state. The woman in charge of putting them in place. Joining us this morning, New York State Homeland Security Emergency Services Commissioner Jackie Bray. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bray, for being with us. Of course, we want to talk about the impact that the heat is having on the utilities because everybody wants to make sure the electricity stays on and they're able to stay cool. Can you tell us exactly what the status is there? Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me. Um, you know, we are in day three now of an excessive heat warning um, across most of the state. We expect this to last for about seven days. Um, and, and, you know, but we are in touch constantly with all of the utilities. Uh, they're stable now. They're doing everything that they need to do to make sure that uh, the power stays on, air conditions can stay running, uh, but we're in constant touch with them, uh, constantly sharing information, constantly making sure that they've got what they need to keep your power on. Right, Jackie, speaking of that constant communication, you're now working with several agencies to coordinate this response. Can you walk us through what that process looks like? Yeah, of course. A couple days before uh, any type of extreme weather event, whether it's heat or thunderstorms or a snowstorm, uh, the agency I run gathers both our fed uh, fellow state agencies uh, and our localities, all of our counties, all of our cities, uh, the emergency management personnel there. Uh, we start briefing on the weather as soon as we've got good forecasts, and then we're making sure that everyone's got what they need where they need it. So if we have to pre-position utility crews, if we need to pre-position generators, we're having those conversations before the event starts. Uh, this time we're really worried, you know, we worry about air quality uh, in a heat, in extreme heat emergency. Uh, we worry about our congregate facilities, so making sure that our nursing homes have everything that they need. Um, and then we're paying, as, as we've already talked about, tremendously close attention to our utilities. And, and Commissioner Bray, barring any blackouts, which of course is something that, that really is, strikes fear into all of our hearts during a, an especially long heat wave like this one, we end up with brownouts. We see sort of very localized mm -hmm. things happen. They tend to happen in densely packed areas of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. of Queens. Rarely do we see it happen inside of Manhattan. Why does it seem that it's disparate as far as who gets mm. hit the hardest with that? Yeah, that's a really important question. So uh, when we're talking about, when the utilities are talking about managing their load or sort of balancing their load and making sure that they don't have cascading impact, uh, what we're really talking about is that on each of their networks, if, if, if more than two of what they call their feeders go out, they sometimes then have to dial back voltage in an effort to save the rest of the network or to keep the rest of the network running. Every time any decision like that is made, they're making it with an eye to ensuring that they can bring service back quickly. Um, and I think what you see in terms of the uh, sort of apparent disparate impact is really about uh, the the equipment that has that sort of is out there already uh, that they're that they're maintaining and then the usage the amount of electricity that's getting used since the pandemic started what we've seen is really different patterns in utility and in electric usage in our outer boroughs we're seeing electric usage go up and stay up uh, whereas you might have assumed in residential areas that would then drop and then come back after work um, so. You know, there's a lot of stuff at play, but it's certainly our hope and the utility's hope uh, that we don't have to take those actions uh, during this event. And like I said, this morning, our grid is stable. Yeah, and Commissioner, what can we do? Because we all individually do bear some responsibility uh, in how this all plays out. Well, let me say, the most important thing that we can do is to keep safe and keep safe from heat-related illness, right? So, so let other people worry for now about power. What, what I need New Yorkers doing is making sure that you're staying out of, uh, that you're staying indoors as much as you can, um, particularly if you've got air conditioning, that you are not performing strenuous outdoor activity or exercise, that you're staying hydrated, that if you have to be outside, you're wearing long, loose-fitting clothing, 
you got to take care of your kids and your pets, as you guys have already talked about this morning. Uh, if you are hot, your pets are hot, bring them inside. Um, and, and know the signs and the symptoms of heat-related illness. Heat exhaustion, heat stroke are emergencies. And so if you or a loved one starts exhibiting those signs, rapid heart rate, um, shallow or rapid breathing, dry, hot, and red skin, um, disorientation, uh, confusion, that's an emergency and you need to seek help immediately. That's right, Commissioner. We can't repeat that enough and we all bear some personal responsibility. Don't be leaving that air conditioner on when you're not in the house. Mm -hmm. Don't be using your big appliances at the peak time of the day. We're in this together, Commissioner of Homeland Security. That's right. And you know, I, will, I will say. Thank you so much, Jackie Bray, for being with us so this much. morning. We Thank really appreciate you. your time.